pleasure to welcome to the program, a continuing program to the one we've done recently with Rigoli Clark, uh, coming from the same political party and so forth, and that's the Tony Grinovich. He's the uh, He's a PhD and he's the run, he ran in the recent election on the Green Party ticket for the 14th district? 14th Congressional District, Eastern Bronx, Western Queens. Right, and uh, we're gonna be talking about elections and about, uh, he's written a book that's a major book, Race and, Poli and Class Politics. We're gonna be talking about that and other matters. Tony, so good to see you again. Good Welcome. to see you again, always good to see you. Always good to talk with Tony. Uh, so the election's over. We've got the Democrats won and so forth. Uh, the Green Party and Jill Stein, it seemed to me to be presenting a very good cast of characters to be put up for election and also very interesting aspects to their overall uh, platform. And that uh, now the election's over, we're thinking about, all, you know, well, where do we go from here, the whole country and that. Seems to me there could be a lot learned by the major political parties from the Green Party's suggestions and I wonder if they feel the same way. Well, they should learn from the Green Party. Yeah. But they're not going to because they're too tied into the oligarchy. Uh, oligarchy, yeah. Yes, the yeah. oil dynasties. Yeah. They yeah. have no. Uh, my, my cousin just got back from a trip to Vienna and Prague and Central Europe, and she was absolutely astounded about uh -huh. the number of solar roofs on homes windmills that supply enough, a single windmill supplying yeah. enough energy for 500 homes, uh -huh. and on and on. It was so modern. Particularly and in Germany, I yes, think. They've and, done it. Right. Yeah. And the Czech Republic. Uh, and, yeah. and she said, we're so backward. Mm -hmm. She didn't realize this until she went there because there's no coverage on the media of this because they don't, the media is brought to you by Exxon Mobil and uh, Ford Motor Cart. Well, they're very powerful interests. Well, they're the most powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who are the big two biggest foundations in this country is the Rockefeller Foundation, which is Exxon. Ford and the, Foundation. And the Ford Foundation is yeah. number two. Yeah. And Sloan is number three, right. General Motors. Uh-huh. You, uh -huh. you can see this, one, two, three. Uh-huh. And that explains it all, the power of money to influence politics. Who would have been the big powers in the year 1900? It would have been railroads. It would have been railroads, you know, yes, but still. And, and, uh, <coughs> and, uh, and what do you call it, Erie Canal and that? You well, know. The, the railroads. Things were, change. Yeah. The railroads were the, and it went yeah. from textiles, which is normally how yeah, industrialization right. begins, yeah. to railroads, and then to oil and autos. But actually, Rockefeller was there already in 1900. He was yeah. the richest man in the world, uh -huh. richest man in history. Uh -huh. He'd be worth $200 billion today. Wow. Himself. Uh huh. And uh, <coughs> he was already the power behind the scenes. Yeah. And the oil, the oil displaced the Herman Melville. You know, the whale oil. They That's use right. whale oil for lighting and that sort right. of thing. And uh, he's a great writer. He's yeah. the greatest. Yeah. You think so, really? He, of the American novelist. Yeah. Of the American novelist. Yeah. Twain and Melville. Melville Did, and Twain. Twain. Yeah. Both. He was great. Did you see the... And the greatest poet is Dickinson. Emily? Her cosmic yeah. poetry. Yeah. She wrote most furiously during the height of our bloody period in the Civil War. Yeah. From 61 to 64, she wrote most of her poetry. She has that, that poem about Dazzle Gradually. That's a beautiful poem. She's uh, Amherst, I guess, right? right? Yeah, that, yeah. <coughs> okay, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Melville was good, and yeah, that that's good. Did you they see? They were all thing? contemporaries. Yeah. Did you see? That's interesting. Yeah, they had a lot of th interesting intellectual stuff going on in England, Europe too. But anyway, you saw the thing on public television about Melville. Magnificent. It was a magnificent film about uh, Moby Dick, or about whaling, out of Nantucket and all of that. It was so well done. I don't know if you happened to see it. No. I, saw, I was absolutely transfixed. It was just beautifully done, a film. Um, but anyway, where we, how did we get to that? Uh, we, got, we could get to, um, well, we were talking about, about the, election. the election. and how the About <coughs> you, how the, the world's run in this moment by oligarchy, or well, oligarchies, oligarchy, as you say. Use Amy yeah. Goodman's term. Yeah, is that her term? Yeah, yeah okay. well, I, I first heard it on hers. So. Okay, right. Okay, I listened so, to her religiously. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> she is good, yeah. And she's, she's aired on television, on, on Manhattan Network. That's good and everything. But, uh, so you've been, why don't you share your own background? You're a writer, and you write on history. Right. You're a historian, and, right. and you're also... Uh, a Green Party, so you're a progressive in terms of yes, political things. Absolutely. 
Jay, your own background a little bit. You you went to school where and that kind well, of Well, I was born on the Upper East Side yeah. when the Third Avenue L was still there. My father moved there uh -huh. in the 19, 1945 to the, ho the house that I was born in, uh -huh. 82nd between Park and Lexington. And oh. I went to PS6 uh -huh. on 82nd and Madison, which uh -huh. formerly had been a convent. Uh -huh. And I carried my desk down in 1955 <laughs> from the old PS6. Uh -huh which had built in, been built in 1895 wow. from uh, down Madison Avenue yeah. to the new PS6. I'll be damned. <coughs> where um, I, pr I put together the first play put on in that. Um, How old would you be? Yeah, I was uh, in fifth grade. Fifth, you're with, ten with, years old. With so two yeah. students, yeah. Uh, other students, Marisa Silverstone yeah. and Roger Klein. And I was yeah. sad to see that Roger had died in London. Yeah, uh, he was on the Council on Foreign Re Relations. But the three of us wrote this play uh -huh. in the Metropolitan Museum of Art Library when the Metropolitan Museum of Art Library was like going into a building during an air raid. No. Oh. Pin drop oh, in right. those days because mm. the dollar was so strong. Yeah, Europe was rebuilding, uh -huh. and uh, the city was quiet, especially yeah. during the summer. But what was the family like? Your family setting? I mean, because you're an intellectually inclined, you write beautifully and everything. So was it intellectually encouraging at home and so forth? Yes, and my father was a writer. Oh, he was a writer. <coughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. He started off as a poet in Poland, uh -huh. and he won a prize. And he came here in 37, mm -hmm. uh, 38, excuse me, uh -huh. and um, established himself in New York. It's interesting. I had, a, I had occasion to have a, a co-host for a while, who a person who, uh, uh, it, it, this comes around, uh, uh, the, the, the notion of IQ, mm -hmm. you know, because we have a lot of different kinds of capability of IQ, mm -hmm. intelligence quotient. Mm -hmm. And I had as a co-host the person who was notified or was noticed in the Guinness Book of Records for about five years as being um, the highest IQ ever recorded. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about things like IQ. And what did he do? Well, no, as a matter of fact, it's very interesting to me. She became my co-host. It was a woman mm -hmm. who had an IQ measured from the time she was five years old of 238 up until the time of her adulthood. And she became the co-host of my program wow. for eight different programs. And she was very interesting, very smart and everything and uh, and that sort of thing but among other things they the people in the, they have uh, Mensa is an IQ thing to a percentile and then they had one called 99.9 .9 .9%, that's 99.9 .9 percentile they have special tests to measure mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. then they had one called mega and there were only 28 people in the world hmm. who had passed these special examinations that measured IQ and there were only 28 people in the world. I once had lunch with four of them. It was a trip, man. They were really something. <laughs> they, had, they had checkered jackets and everything. And then this other person, her name was Marilyn Mockbo Savant. And uh, we got into quite, they got into uh, investigations, modeling and that sort of thing, of professions and the IQ, where the high school, highest IQ is among the various professions that people have to select like for themselves. And among the highest were writers. Writers have the highest IQ as a group of people within the world society than anybody else, so you're in good company. Well, if IQ three, matters. <clears throat> I'm, I'm into the three R's, reading, writing, and running. Oh! <laughs> so, and running, exercise, yeah. enhances your brain capacity by about 12%. That Is kind of cardiovascular exercise. So you're, you're but reading and writing. You're into fitness and everything. Yes, of course. Okay, yeah. You're not a lazy slug, like. Yeah. No, I have too many, too few hours in the day. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, you do re great writing, and you do history. Where did you do your work in history? Uh, I went to Columbia. Columbia, <coughs> and then I, uh, where I majored in uh, European history. Okay. <coughs> and then I went to the University of Pennsylvania to work under uh, Lee Benson. It didn't work out, so I ended up with Walter Licht, who's a labor historian. That's in Philadelphia. Yeah, in Philadelphia. Yeah. University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, right. That's where Fuller was for a while. Buck, my right. hero. <coughs> Buck, Mr. Fuller right. was there, yeah. But uh, I, I enjoyed history from a very young age. There was a lot of history going on in Europe. I mean, my first history book that I read in one sitting, yeah. I think it was seven hours on a Sunday afternoon. Right. Eli Whitney. I oh. think I was in the fourth grade. Right. A biography of Eli Whitney. Right, right, right. Of course. I was raised on uh, uh, Clarence Darrow. Clarence oh. Darrow for the defense. My daddy was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is all <clears throat> rambling on and everything, but it's background. And you, you write on history, and you've got progressive uh, 
uh, take on the human condition from the get-go or from being a young man? Yes, or, yeah. absolutely. And you still do and you still absolutely. have uh, concern for the human condition? Um, and, the, and the environment. And the environment as because well. Because you can't have, uh -huh. I mean, if you, if you don't have a, a environmental justice, you mm -hmm. don't have justice. And okay. <clears throat> you can see what happens when money rules as the, in New York City and real estate takes over and encourages people to buy, to yeah. build by the sea, and pays no attention to the empirical evidence that the sea levels were rising. We had Bob, Hurricane Bob, yeah. in, in the 90s, uh -huh. and when the South Sea seaport flooded knee deep, preparation should have begun then to do something about this. Uh -huh. It was only a matter of time uh -huh. before another storm would come along, like Sandy, uh -huh. and do what it did. <clears throat> and the warning signals were ignored until too late. Yeah. In fact, the mayor was the last to acknowledge this, and he acknowledged it at 11.20 on Sunday before the Monday high tides, especially the Monday eve uh -huh. high tide. Yeah. And I actually went to his building, and it's the first time I ever ex um, talked to one of the officers on duty. It was Sergeant Boyle, and I said, look, where is this guy? Yeah. I mean, Christie's declared yeah. a state of emergency. Cuomo's declared a state of emergency. Malloy has declared a state of emergency. Where is Bloomberg? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, what was he doing? Mm. It reminded me of the snowstorms. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think at 1120 he came in. I didn't pay much attention, but all the computer models, and I wanted to be a meteorologist, but I did not have the math. So I've always, I always follow it on the web, on AccuWeather and Weather.com, yeah, yeah. and they, all the spaghetti models were saying the storm would go up the coast yeah. and then make a left because yeah. it was a blocking high. Yeah. And it was a huge sprawling storm I saw on BBC. It was a thousand miles wide. Yeah, it was the thousand size of miles, Europe. yeah. It covered the size of Europe. They yeah. were showing this on the BBC yeah, right. on Saturday. Yeah, I saw and, that and too. He, yeah. you know, but I did, I'll give you one anecdote to tell, tell you how unaware the mayor was. Mm. I'm a member of the New York Society Library. <clears throat> okay. On March 1st, 2009, uh -huh. I'm sitting in the library. Before I leave, I look at the computer model. It says weather, the computers on weather.com. Uh -huh. And they say a blizzard is coming. It's going to be very cold. And watch out. Yeah, right, okay? right, right, Get right. prepared. Right, right. So I told the then assistant librarian at the time, Jane Goldstein, Mm -hmm. Before the library closed at 5 o'clock, I said, Jane, we're not going to be open tomorrow uh -huh. because of this storm, yeah. Monday, March uh -huh. 2nd. And did she say, oh, and, well, tut, tut? Yes. Right. <laughs> no, but, yeah, she didn't say tut, tut. She <laughs> takes me seriously. Yeah, I okay, yeah. Seriously. Right, right, right. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I just said that to her. Yeah, yeah. And then I walked over to the Vion coffee shop to get some comfort food. Yes. Some roast chicken, like chicken every Sunday. Oh, good. Yeah, right, 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 and right. And some right. good mashed potatoes. Yeah, right. And I walk into the restaurant. It's practically deserted. But I look over there on the side in one of the booths. And uh. who's sitting there but the mayor? Oh, wow. A very fashionable orange uh, jacket. Uh -huh. And he's sitting there with his um, mayoral assistant. And across from him is Liz Kruger. Yeah. the state senator <laughs> okay. in this area. <laughs> and I walk over to Liz and I say hi. Mm. You know, w and I yeah. start bantering with uh, her because right. we as Greens endorsed her candidacy okay. when she ran for the state senate in the year 2000. Oh, okay, good. All right? right, right. The Greens stick together, yeah. Well, sure. well I don't know. No. She's not a Green. She's a Democrat. This okay. is when we were in, still some people wanted to endorse Democrats. Okay. So we all had a nice conversation. Right. I huh? paid no attention to him because uh -huh. I was still angry at him because he what he did with the third term. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So huh? then I'm, so the next booth is... Uh, I go to the, it's occupied with a couple, and I sort of recognize the woman, and she smiles, and I smile back, and I go to the third booth, yeah. which is empty, and I wheel around and sit there, it's Giuliani and Judith Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> right. Giuliani's back. Boy, everybody in the world, yeah, right. Well, I told uh, yeah. Angelo, the, uh, <coughs> the manager there, yeah. I said, this is the only time you had two mayoral, two mayors, yeah, right. and one mayoral candidate uh, in the restaurant. Yeah. <coughs> but the point of the story is, yes. I had told Jill this at five, uh, Jill. I had told uh, Jane this at yeah. 5 o'clock. Uh -huh. And next morning, the mayor gets on the radio at 6 a.m. and says, anyone who looks outside and sees what's going on 
knows yeah. that there's not going to be any school today. Uh -huh. And he could have done that 12 hours before. Uh, yeah. So that's the first time I was aware. You mean, but you, you were totally basing years on reading the weather maps and the, not the years. I just looked at the computer model and listened to what they said. Yeah, because but, um, because there it is. Yeah. And guess what? That's looking ahead. That's looking ahead. That's, that's 12 having, hours. 12 I know, hours. but that's looking ahead, and that's got foresight. It's called and everything. Well, well, Shouldn't the political just, leaders be <coughs> that taking advantage of the, the information is, available got, to them? I, I, we got 8.3 inches of snow that day, okay. and the temperature dropped to 11 during yeah. the day, uh -huh. and the record was 10 for March 2nd. Uh -huh. So everything was on the point. Yeah. Now you had this year, there are people who just don't get it. Mm -hmm. They were saying, oh, Irene wasn't so bad. Uh, I'm going to stick it out. Yeah. And they died. There's a metaphor here for political reading <coughs> of the tea leaves or something like that also. It seems to me that can be transmogrified from weather to the weather conditions for the society and so forth. Some sort of a metaphor that can be made. Yeah, but if special How do you get the information that you base your decisions upon in terms of uh, past experience and from reading the science? Hard so science. Okay, but, hard science. But the saying. politicians are beholden to big money and big money is oil and Bloomberg is above it all. I used to have a guy, I lived in New Paltz, New York, yes. upstairs, there was a professor up there, and there was an old guy going around, Mr. Twilliker. <laughs> name was Mr. Iloco. There was mm -hmm. a guy, and he used to walk along, he'd walk along the street and say, hi, Mr. Twilliker, how are you? He's a man of few words, right? He said, okay. I said, so, Mr. Twilliker, what's it going to be this autumn? Are we going to have a hard winter or a soft winter? Hard. How do you know that, Mr. Twilliker? Look at the caterpillars. <laughs> he well, would look at the caterpillars sure. and he would get a measure. <clears throat> and damn it, he called it right every year. Mm -hmm. He called it, it was just local thing. And so those kind of things, people are looking at the future. People are looking at taking mm -hmm. I, I understanding. And if you start looking beyond weather maps and everything, there are all kinds of weather maps that are giving mm -hmm. you uh, ideas or possibilities, ca capabilities for the present and the yeah, future you don't have and to the get trending. That complicated. Do they get? Do they <clears> get? And, and everything's connected to everything else. There's so many different things you can read mm -hmm. into patterns rather than one thing, you know. And how does the leadership of the world or the human society uh, take mm -hmm. into account all of the things that are to be known, historically and otherwise, in the readings, plus the modelings and the things that can be known scientifically and that to get direction for our society? Well, it's pretty clear that they're not concerned. You think that? <clears throat> I don't see well, that. Well then include in that also the intellectuals and the people who are supposed to be able to be reading things and giving direction well, the intellectuals, to if the, the intellectuals the intellectuals, have, yeah. If the intellectuals could have the access to the mass media that the politicians do mm -hmm. who are there because they had got managed to get enough money to win then we'd have a different story to tell. Yeah. But with the politicians and the Democratic and Republican Party are beholden to big money. Haven't uh, do you, see, you brought that up at the beginning of the program? You said money rules the world or something. something I didn't that say that. Edgar Allan Poe says well, it. I have the quote in here. Once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered, we. No, but he said other very poignant political points, which is why I included them. Yeah, but I know, but but the, you said money. Isn't it always been that history has had some group of people? Whether you call it money, you call it oil, you call it uh, the uh, railroad barons, or you call it the feudal lords, or <coughs> hasn't it always been throughout all of history a few people run things and everybody else are like serfs on a feudal estate? Not necessarily. No, no, were there periods of history where you did not well, have pre, it? Well, pre in Greece was a no, slave society. Pre-history, pre which yeah. we only have 10,000 years of history to call yeah, history. Yeah, right, that's about eight, okay. ten thousand. 10,000. <clears throat> when we had tribal mm -hmm. formations, when people Came with were, the Neolithic when Revolution, people were yeah. no, nomads and, and <coughs> pastoral, yeah. there was much more equality. There was mm. less disparity in wealth. They anyway, were hunting and gathering before that and for about 190,000 yes. years. Yes, and hunting and gathering. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So we don't know too well about that. So as that. soon as you get the rivers flowing because of the melting of the ice ages, yeah. and you get the river valley civilizations, uh -huh. okay, the Nile, the yeah. Yellow River, the Indus River. Well, it also depended upon a major transformation in terms of what we call the Neolithic, which was and the invention of agriculture yes. and, and agriculture, husbandry. Agriculture mm -hmm. is where the divisions started. 
the people with land versus the people without land. It also created surplus <coughs> that made possible civilization. That's you right. couldn't have civilization until you had surplus, so that's you can right. have some leisure. So long as you I think civilization means city dwelling. I believe that's the etymology. Civis. Yeah, and uh, so you had that, and you had four major food complexes that made possible. Yeah. And it, but the it, river of flowing every year, be, when the snows melted from Kilimanjaro and well, that's the, that's the and flowed down the mile. That's Nile, the Nile, yeah. That created fresh soil every year yeah. to sustain the rice growing, which sustained the civilization. I don't think and the surpluses had. were so great yeah. that they could support a class of had, artisans and scribes. Right. You had four <coughs> major complexes, wheat and barley in the West, as Mesopotamia and Egypt. You had rice in China. You had a mix mm -hmm. in the Indus Valley. You had mace in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And then you had a fourth major food complex that was the high islands of South mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. That's where I did my dissertation, up right. in the high islands of South America. That was the potato and the quinoa. They built a civilization that rivaled the old world in art by the time of Christ. And then mm -hmm. civilization mm -hmm. went back mm -hmm. 3,000 B.C. based upon mm -hmm. a different food complex. Right. And that's a, that's a part of an economy. But the thing is, once you get to civilization, then you get ruling class. Right. And you get pharaohs, and you get kings, and you get people, you get mafia. Well, you have bosses. class disparity, and then right. you have the society moving forward. And, it and most continued. societies were slave-based yeah. until the modern times, when until, wage slavery replaced until it. Until including the modern times. Right. If you look at things in but a certain But now computers future, are doing all the work, right. and it's a jobless future, well, and that's we have well-educated people without jobs, yeah. and we had the Occupy movement. Yeah, right. And we have the strike debt That movement. was a fast move through <coughs> history for a historian. Well, you yeah, know, because that's we true. want to get to the present, we want to talk about yeah, the, the right. election. And the Green Party, right, and, the, and, the, and the means Party, by which... Uh, which is practices what it preaches yeah. as much as possible in yeah. terms of environmental sustainability. Yeah. I heard you say, uh, 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 our friend uh, 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 Aronowitz, wrote a book called The Jobless Future. Yes, he did. Had a he book was called right, it. Was right we did a program board. about it. I know, that. and he was on your program, and he predicted it. Like yeah, you can, right. You can download it you on You know who YouTube. else predicted it, don't <laughs> you know? Who else predicted that, maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, into the political class was uh, John, Lord John Maynard Keynes. He said that you're going to have the grandchildren, in 1930, a letter to his grandchildren, he said, and it's hard to imagine. Mm -hmm. But the grandchildren, he wrote the letter to his grandchildren in their maturity, which would be about now. He said, you're going to be confronted, the world is going to be confronted with something very hard to understand, technologically induced massive unemployment. He predicted that for the very time. And he also time. said, famously, yes, that the rentier, rentier class should be euthanized. Oh, okay. Did he Landlo say that? Yes, Did he Landlo say that in those euthanized. words? Yeah. Because all they do is take up the surplus value, they take up the wages, and you can't sustain an economy where everybody's paying But what about his prediction? On well, with Stanley Aronowitz and John Maynard Keynes saying you're going to have massive uh, unemployment, is something that is technologically, it's structural. It's mm -hmm. not a matter of policy and everything that it could be adjusted to or something. But anyway, he said, that, is, that, is that a reality? Because I'll tell you, if it, it is, we're is. in deep doo-doo <coughs> in That's terms correct. of the normal politics because all they talk about mm -hmm. are jobs in terms of distributing demand. Well, people and, need uh, to, because in this society, there's no free health care, there's no free education, mm -hmm. and Housing is extremely be. expensive. Yeah. Well, right. City University had free education from 1847 yeah. to 1975. So that's why when Jill Stein announced yeah. on August 2nd, yeah. 2011. That was your was presidential running, candidate. Right. Yeah. I uh -huh. said, Jill, you're our candidate. Yeah, right. So you did. You agreed right from the get-go. Yeah. Right from the get-go. So was there a competition for that? Uh, yeah, Roseanne Barr. Oh, Roseanne Barr. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. But that's not... No, yeah, right, that, right, She right. was more or less confined to California. I like the guy who said, the rent's too damned high party. That was good. No, I forget I'm, who that was. But, but he was driving around in a car... <laughs> supplied by the Democrats. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but the point is that mm. in uh, September, uh -huh. I thought it would be a great time for Jill to come to New York yeah. on the anniversary of the Occupy movement. Good so for I her, yeah. So I called up the campaign, and, they, and I shepherded, I squired Jill around the New York, New York on, on the uh, 17th of October. Is that when they were still downtown and everything? Or no? That yes, was that, that was October 17th, uh, Octo I'm sorry, September 17th, 2012. Is that when they crashed? Monday. Is that when they crashed the party, Bloomberg? When did he? When he did, did he get that, started? He did that the year before. Oh, okay, right. He okay. did that in November. So that had happened, yeah. Right. That That's happened. I'm talking about this year. Okay. September, 2000. 
12. It's getting troublesome with me because all the dates seem to blend into right. one another. And when, September 17, yeah. 2012. Yeah, all right, okay. I squired her downtown. Yeah. We went to the Occupy movement. What was the, where did you go to go? Well, we went to Liberty Plaza. Okay. And, and yeah. it also happened to be Rosh Hashanah. Uh -huh. So we went to the Rosh Hashanah service at Zuccotti mm -hmm. Park mm -hmm. on Monday evening. Okay. Uh, and then we went, we had also gone, or we, uh, we went to the um, Environmental Working Committee okay. of Occupy okay, yeah. at Bowling Green for yeah. a mass rally. Are you in touch with that Occupy movement? Yes. You are in touch. You're, so yes. you're somebody I could be in touch with. Oh, absolutely. To keep me up to well, date I was with at the it. strike that meeting on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, okay, good. Good for you. I'm glad to do that. It, it breathed life into it. I would do everything I possibly could <coughs> to breathe life into that Occupy movement uh, worldwide. So mm. then she came down again to get into the debates that were held at Hofstra uh -huh. uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, just before the election. And then she was arrested. Uh -huh. And I for was. For what? For just trying to get into the debate with Sherry. Oh, okay. And they were taken to a warehouse and their hands were tied behind their back. Tied? Yes, for eight hours. No! Yes, yes, yes. This is what they did. And I was called at about oh, midnight. Is that, is that the police? Yes. Okay. Because they tried to get into this sham debate between Obama and Romney. Ah. So that's how they treat political dissidents here. If even who, someone who theoretically was on enough ballots to become president of the United States. Yeah, right. State ballots. In so incredible. I came, I came out For there how long? And, well, I know, I, let's say several hours. Let's, I'll say several because Thank I think you. they were arrested about three or four yeah. and they were released around 11. That's about eight hours. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh. <coughs> after midnight yeah. I went out, I drove out, picked yeah. them up at a yeah. Dunkin' Donuts in yeah. Belmar yeah. and drove them back, uh, right. Sherry to Brooklyn and uh, Jill to Manhattan, where yeah, she was right. staying. Yeah. And then the third time I was called up to take uh, Jill from when she came to New York, the third time she came to New York, yeah. I was called up to take her from Penn Station to MTV uh -huh. for a half hour taping right. on her candidacy. So MTV was MTV, interested and, yeah. and taped her for half an hour. Uh -huh. So she was here at least th th that amount of time. Good in for New York you, campaign. yeah. yeah. So okay, I, yeah. yeah. And you spotted her early then. I and spotted her. Had, Gotten. As soon as I heard her talk. She's very articulate. She was Absolutely. very articulate, Absolutely. very, very, uh, you know, <clears throat> she's very good for television. And she's concerned v doubly about the future. Not only the future of the environment, uh -huh. but the future of our children, since uh -huh. she's a pediatrician. Uh-huh, yeah. So. Well, yeah, that's very good. Now, what's the lesson from the, uh, you're progressive and so forth, and what are the lessons of the time? And what is the context? What is the largest context that we can take into account that gives a meaning and comprehensive? I just was talking to Coley, our co colleague who ran for the Senate, mm -hmm. and everything. I told her, I was just thinking the other day that I've done about 3,000 programs, and I was just thinking, it just occurred to me in the bathtub the other day, they all interrelate. 3,000, you got different, all these different people you've talked to, and there is, in my mind, like a pattern, that the pattern is like a tree, and they all interrelate to one another. It's hard to get it into a particular sentence. But you're the guy yeah. who threaded that tapestry of 3,000. Yeah, but no, but it occurred to me is there's so many Seconds. different things. I mean, because <clears> reality <throat> is such a complex thing. It's mm. so complex. You're coming out of history, mm. and there's all, the, mm. and so you want to get at modeling. We can do modeling now that hasn't been available to us. How large a context can leadership, or people would describe the leadership, or Im influence leadership, or impress it? How large a context can they get to before they get? Uh, waylaid by some specialization, one issue or something like that, and that would be politicians of the normal mm -hmm. uh, order, or the people who would challenge it, or the people, intellectuals who would stand outside. How large a context can we take into account where you take into so many different things rather than one special thing? You could spend a whole lifetime reading on one year within yeah, 1876. but there are issues of the moment. Yeah, okay. And the, and yeah. the, and the two party do you, do you, political do you, system. But do you yes. understand what I'm trying to yes. get at? And the two party political system is ideally unsuited to deal with those issues. Uh -huh. Because when the issue of slavery was raised in yeah. the late 1830s, Congress banned any discussion. The two parties agreed not to talk about it. So a third party, the Liberty Party, came into existence, which uh -oh. made. 1830s? 
1830s. Okay, yeah. Liberty 1844, Party. Okay, yeah. Liberty okay. Party, 1839. Yeah, okay. So third, in that case, and as in all cases, third parties act as catalytic agents, agents for transformation of the two-party system. Well, they either introduce an issue yeah, like slavery yeah. that's not being dealt with by the two uh -huh, parties, yeah, or they replace one of the two parties, the as they did three times before the. Civil War. Okay, yeah, Three but two-party systems. Were there, were, were, weren't the founding fathers aware of the fact that slavery was a basic dividing issue that had to be addressed, wouldn't, and was put off? I mean, the founding fathers well, were aware of that. a lot of that. them thought it would die out. So therefore, they weren't going to deal with it. In fact, the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 yeah. banned slavery in the, the old Northwest, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. Did now, it? Yeah. yes. Uh -huh. The point is, because yeah. the people up north didn't necessarily want it, the new states coming in it. Yeah. <clears throat> But, back to Eli Whitney, Yeah, his cotton gin. Yeah, right. He's one of the few technological innovations that set us back. Because once you solve the problem of removing the seed from the cotton ball, right. that was the most onerous delicate task, operation, yeah. onerous task, yeah. that reduced the cost of producing King cotton That's to emerge, right. yeah, right. Oh, I wish I was in King the land of cotton. cotton. Old yeah. times there are not forgotten. They saw the profitability uh -huh. after the cotton gin was invented. But right. the cotton gin is invented after the Constitution is written. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 <coughs> that's true, right, yeah. And right. the Constitution had a big had effect. built yeah, into yeah. its founding structure yeah. this notion of three-fifths of a person yeah. to satisfy the people in the South yeah. who didn't want a str strong central government. Yeah, right, right, uh, right, right. Yeah, that's that's, why, yeah, that's yeah. why South Carolina mm -hmm. had double its representation in Congress because they counted slaves as three-fifths of a person. Right. The majority of people in South Carolina uh -huh. were slaves. Yeah, that's a, larger te that's a larger issue about the influence of technology and technological development which is unique to human consciousness in a sense, it seems to me, even though it's inherent in honeybees, we couldn't live without honeybees pollinating things in a natural way. But in general, we have a unique capability to extend our consciousness through tools and make the world different than in an Eden-like sense is the way of most of the creatures and probably the way in which we were while we were hunting and gathering embedded in nature. All the resources were there when we came out of the cave. Right. But we had a liaison with technologically manipulating right. the environment and the, the, well, in the, beginning, the natural the, environment in the beginning, and, and the, the extensions of kind. It's a big difference between having to mm -hmm. find a cave when you're wandering around and building a house. Yeah, in the beginning, the environment controlled people. Yeah. And now people control the environment when to did a certain this, level. Okay, when did it change? When did it change? Yeah, the when Industrial did it change? Revolution, industrial? principally. I would say when the carbon in the air came up and up. We're right. up to 390. I, I, I would think and that 350 was the tipping point. I think and Sandy, Sandy is an expression of what is to come. Um, As if Bob should have said so before, uh, yeah. the one in the 90s. Should have learned, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they didn't learn. Yeah. They didn't prepare, especially right. in the city. Right. And as you know, the mayor only cared about one thing. Yeah. The marathon. Yeah. <laughs> you mean, at, oh, as, as, as Sandy that, yet. Yes, yeah. when Sa after Sandy. Yeah. yeah <clears throat> the yeah. marathon must go on. Well, he probably thought he was making a judgment. You keep up the spirits, we can do it. He thought he could do well, it. Well, he did the same thing after the snowstorm. He did the same thing after the blizzard in yeah. 2010. Yeah. He said, don't despair. Go out and join a Broadway show. Go yeah. out and buy a ticket and see well, a Broadway of, show. Well, that's that's part of a cheerleading role for the mayor. Yes, but that's not his, his job. He's not a cheerleader. Comer. What is the job? He is. That's the part of his job. The job is to minister to the needs of the people of New York. Well, one of the needs of the people of New York is to feel good spirit and go out and overcome adversity when it comes. But if he you didn't. Can, and he leadership in, that way. He was in trying to make a good case. Yeah, for him, although he I don't was like in Bermuda. Him. Yeah. Right? Oh. He flew to Bermuda. He was the last plane to fly in on Sunday before the blizzard mm. on the 26th of December, mm. 2011. He escaped the blizzard by going to Bermuda? Well, he went when he knew the storm was coming. The Weather, the weather Bureau had said Friday we're going to have a major storm on Sunday and Monday. So he split. He split because well, he had to go to Bermuda yeah, well, we, <coughs> for Christmas. He went yeah. to Bermuda for Christmas. He but wouldn't you, Christmas if you were the York. mayor and you had the facility and you had the plane parked right no, in the backyard, you could no, have flown away from out of the blizzard? I could have done that. I Why had the not? opportunity. Why? Because that's not my moral compass. Well, 
okay? It's not my moral compass. You're I have saying, plenty of opportunity. You would want to stay there? No, or, I would never. If you were in the Johnstown flood, would you stay there and no, be no, rolled over by the saying? water? Would I want to go to Bermuda? No, I wouldn't go. I would stay in this city and man the ship of state and not run away, okay? And not slough it off because he's in some la-la land. Uh -huh. And totally insensitive. You I mean, seem, how many, how many you seem to have a brief against the mayor of the city of New York. Well, because of the way he's conducted the mayor. Oh, city. well, that's one reason by which you can build a brief, I guess, yeah. He cares I about think, two things, yeah. Wall Street and tourism. Uh-huh, those are two biggies, I yeah, guess. But yeah. how about the needs of the people who are not involved? Well, I don't know. The it's homeless, it, Harold, the homeless population tell me about is it. at a record. Tell me about it. And the prison and, population. And the prison population. I'm talking yeah. about New York City yeah, as right, mayor. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're an okay. extension of time. Of he went yeah. to MIT mm -hmm. on December 1st, 2011 mm. and gave a speech. Mm. And you can look this up on the web. Yeah. And he said, I would feel comfortable yeah. with a classroom size of 70 in the public schools. Seven O. Oh. He was talking about his own experience, or he's thinking. He's projection? talking about projecting oh. onto the public school system. We really system. crammed them in there, right? Right. Yeah. And he sent his kids to Dalton School on 88th, yeah, where the class size is 20. Now, if I were mayor, I would definitely use that money for reducing class sizes. Mm -hmm. for restoring the art and music programs that he destroyed. Mm -hmm. I went for the U.S. American Social, Hist the Social History Project at CUNY. I went on a uh, tour yeah. of a school uh -huh. in Brooklyn, Wingate High School. And I went yeah. to an art class. Yeah. And I went to an art class. This is about 2002, 2003. Yeah. And the teacher was doing wonderful work with her students. Yeah. And I asked her about the supplies. She said she went out and bought the supplies on her own money. Isn't that amazing? That is a disgrace. Yeah, it is sure. a moral disgrace, a civic disgrace, mm -hmm. and an insult to the city's citizens of New York, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. There's a reason why our education system, which 50 years ago was number one in the world, now ranks 19th. Is it 19th? Yes, right? 19th. Is that it's in going, the whole wide slipping. world? Is that in it's the whole, the wide? whole wide world? Yes. Well, it's 195 countries, 19 or 20. I mean, these two but are it's there. going down. Why, why, going, why is it necessary? Why is you, it going down? Because what's they're the not problem putting money into it. They're, they're not, not putting money they're into not it. Putting, because the 1% here is outsourcing and downsizing. And as you know from the last time I was on your show, yeah. we talked about the twenty-one trillion dollars that has been outshored. Twenty-one to thirty-five offshored. trillion. If I'm right, that's twenty-one to thirty-five shorter. James Henry. Yeah, right, yeah. James Henry's right. tax that's policy that's network. That's trillion and, with a T. Right. The nineteen no, to equivalent thir to the yeah. GDP of the U.S. and Japan. Yeah. Uh -huh, right. Not paying any taxes. When you go by Chase, yeah. you see private client. Yeah. They can figure out a way. Yeah. With your five million dollars, yeah. for us to offshore your funds, yeah. and you won't have to pay any. Well, they taxes do that. On They've it. been doing it. Switzerland's been doing it, and, the and they were caught in two thousand eight. Yeah. UBS was caught. Or was it HB, SBC? USB, I think it was. Yeah, it was yeah. eighteen. They found eighteenth. That was before the election. That was to drum up support for the Democrats. Yeah, and or maybe it was just shortly after to show that they were doing something about wow. the one percent. There were eighteen thousand accounts, eighteen billion dollars in them just so happened to be 18 billion in 18,000 accounts. It was costing the taxpayer here $300 million a year. Well, that's taxpayer money that could be seized by the people who had earned it instead of uh, handing it over to a lot of non-deserving poor people well, when the, those people uh, wanted to save the way. money for it's themselves. It's inherited wealth. It's and legacy. They, it's dynasty based on class rule. Well, hasn't it always been like that? One of the things I it's get... It's never it, been so extreme. Okay. Don't forget that Bloomberg is, has one distinction. He is the richest mayor in the history of the planet. Okay, well, that's a, a sign. And many people thinking of moral, uh, moral uh, advancement. If, you, if you're rich, it's because you deserve to be rich. You know, that's the attitude of a lot of the super rich and everything. Of course. I they're better than everybody. They think they're better than everybody else. Yeah. And I think the kings of England, when you had a hereditary <coughs> order for a thousand miles, thought they were better and so did the than Roman anybody else. And, guess and what the Roman, and guess yeah. what happened to and Charles even the in First? Even in Periclean Greece, and guess what happened slaves. to Louis the Sixteenth? Yeah. Well, the Sixteenth. And guess what? And guess what happened to Nicholas? Well, yeah. And Alexandra. That's the feudal order ended, and then we came to ours, and now we're coming to a thing. And you're saying our system is more corrupt? 
or more devastating than the systems that poor suffering humanity has to suffer over all of, of human because history? Because the power of technology is being used against the people. You think it is? Oh, is there absolutely. any hope? Uh, uh, so we've never had justice. I think in a, in a long sense, there's no sense to think we've ever had, as Howard Zinn's right, you're talking about the people's history from the standpoint of the people who have been screwed over by right. the people who are the political class that run and always have run and do run now every political entity in the broader world. But we're talking, so what's different? We're talking about the two-party system. Yeah, no, well, if you want, that's the way well, it happens to come I want to talk about out. it because I live okay, here. I okay. don't live uh, in Good. the world. I but just here. to put it in historical perspective, yeah. you're not talking about anything out of historical context. No. It's never been just. We've never had just in terms of what the future perhaps allows now who for some to, reason. To, to and it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. Right. It, it's an Oxum's razor thing where you've got tremendous capability for liberation or for annihilation. The weapons are now but species can, it's lethal. It's very clear that this society is going down fast. You think it is clear, Let's right? Let's look okay. at public this, education, are which you talking free. New York City, New York, uh, United about States, the country. are you talking about the world? I'm talking about the nation. The nation of the United the States. The student debt in uh. this country exceeds mortgage debt. Yeah. It is yeah. well over a trillion dollars. Right. In the last couple of months, if you're using a parab 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 parabolic Get the curve. enunciation parabolic correct, young man. Curve. Parabolic. The parabola has just... Parabolic. It is, it's going <laughs> up yeah. fa fast faster than ever before as we speak. Now, what is that parabolic is? Parabola. And, yeah, parabola. Now, what is that again? I missed it the because we were worried about the... The student is increasing yeah. at a rapid, shall we say, at a geometrically, as yeah. opposed to arithmetically. Yeah, okay, right, okay, very good. To yeah, say that. You sound like Malthus, <laughs> yeah, and everything, but... Well, no. Anyway, and no. There's no, and there's no end in sight. Yeah. And you have these people talking about fiscal cliff. Yeah. Yeah, go that's... After, go after the money in the offshore accounts. Go after the Cayman Islands and the Isle of Jersey where these where the one percent has stored the money so Why they don't, don't have to we? pay taxes. Why don't we? Because they run the government. Well, so that so that the people who run things are not imposed not uh, disposed toward Why setting up a be? system that Why would be for be? the people. Why should they? So we live like in a slave system. Exactly. We live in a slave system. When, but the only difference And heritage institutions well, reify we from, that. In this country we've gone through three stages of debt. Go on. I, I'm sorry, three stages of slavery. Oh, oh well, okay. chattel slavery. Chattel slavery, yeah. wage slavery, and now debt slavery. Debt slavery. Exactly. Well, the debt slavery is really, okay, if you do that and all that offshoring, that's something they would do if you're a CEO and you've got containerization, <coughs> you can set up over another place and economically mm -hmm. set up and do it over there and make more money. They're going to do that. They're not going to have a loyalty to keep, uh, you know, it's like I remember the... And that's why the, that's why the debates between Obama and Romney were so dull and statistical, uh. because they couldn't offend their big campaign contributors. And that's why my campaign, when I ran for Congress, was yeah. so simple. Yeah. The five-fingered exercise. Okay, tell me about it. Jobs, education, health care, housing, the environment. Together they spell fist, uh. power to the people. Oh. Wow, that's clever. You should be on Madison Avenue. You can make a fortune no, as, a, as, a, as a hack, I you know, on Madison your, Avenue. No, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But it worked very well. <laughs> yeah. I worked very well. I yeah. more than doubled my percentage. But why? I mean, I, I'm sorry. I almost doubled my percentage, well, but I more than doubled my vote. You did it differently because you came up, you said five, and you said fist. Five first, no, fingers. you said first jobs. Well, and we then it spells fist. It should be F is what? Finance first? No, no, no. Five-fingered exercise. Oh, yeah. Jobs, education, oh. health care, housing, the environment. Oh, I thought but this is no different mm. from what Franklin Roosevelt said in his economic bill of rights yeah. enunciated on the patron saint of American yeah. bankers. I want I don't even know Call that. I'm that. not familiar the with that. The economic bill of rights. Yeah. He didn't mention the environment. Uh huh. But he said every American on January eleventh, nineteen forty four, he said every American should have the right to a job, a right to education the right to oh, health care, and the right to housing. Yeah, okay. All of that spells security. Yeah. Why are people so insecure Yeah, but what about we talked... pill popping. Yeah, but we, we talked about John Keynes, uh, John Maynard Keynes, That's and right. we talked about displacement of labor. And now labor, uh, the, the idea of labor, uh, the, the capital assets are becoming responsible for production. 
increasingly in a ratio with the labor. financialization of capital. Not financialization only, but not just the financing of capital, but the actual technological instruments with automation. If so you got an algorithm that can displace 50,000 people doing something that they did in the past, and you can get great production from that, you can't stop that going. It, the displacement of labor, as Keynes said, it's structural. It's built in. You don't need people to do the things that people have done and the labor contribution jobs, you don't need them and they're not gonna be jobs there unless you just build, you, you do things all out of contention with what possibility is there for displacing them with technological systems with tremendous productive capability and we wouldn't have any debt if the people on mass, instead of just having a job as getting income, had had a piece of the action of the uh, capital instrument producing the wealth, they would have money because what we have is a demand problem. We don't, they don't have the ability to buy what can be produced That's why of good food development. Stamp. That's why food stamps is growing at a rapid well, rate. Well, food stamps is a way to get something to them, That's but the right. point, the, the structural problem is they don't have, when they form capital, mm -hmm. it's all done only with past savings. And that's, and, so, why, and that's why Bloomberg... Yeah, but why do we accept it? Why does the left accept it? They're all caught up it. with it. You all, kill the leaders. No, they're all... I'm sorry. You kill Malcolm, you kill Martin, you, and you, you kill the leaders, and you set an example. Okay? That's what happens. Well, I heard and you, you say some. the first thing you said, jobs. Right. Jobs. You, jobs are going to be, there is not going to be, Excuse nor me. should you there be jobs. share the wealth so we can have Share the wealth time. how? By re Excuse me. You share the time also. Remember that Harry Van Arsdale, yeah. Van Arsdale Avenue, Queens College, yeah. said we should have a 30-hour week in the 30s. If there's unemployment, reduce the work week and keep the full benefits. Well, all right, that's one way to go about it, but the thing is it's structural. Well, that's an important way to go but about it. But what about the idea of the way we form capital? Why do we allow capital to be formed only by those already rich? Because we allow money in elections, and no. money in elections allows people to be swayed by campaign advertising. Well, and we can't get into the debate. But there's a horse. Try to get into the debate. Hi, darling. There's a horse. There's a horse the and a there's a horse and a cart there somewhere. Okay, what you're talking about. And the thing is that it's a larger context that the way in which the the trend in terms of production is away from labor to technological instruments. No, it's not, because uh, we just had a fire the other day in Bangladesh, Desh, which rivaled the Triangle Shirtwaist fire, and all they were producing there was for American companies like well, Walmart. But and you, 140 women would died in the same kind of circumstance. Well, that's the part. bosses chained the doors so they died. I remember they the smothered, They burned. I well, know that. Well, yeah, this happened the other day. Okay, it was you're on right. Amy on Monday. You're right. So the, another thing that there's there's not, no different. They just the transferred. They yeah, outsourced. But, yeah, but they yes, of course they're going to outsource. Why aren't they? They've now got the because ability. Because we don't control these guys, and all they care about is money. They don't care about the people. Well, all right. Well, they care about profits, That's and they correct. care about a profit motive. So and also, but they're in control of our politics. There were a whole bunch of even different though values are yeah, not shared by the not majority so, of the American it's people. It's not so one-sided because you've got you've got things that happened. Uh, who was the guy that used to run the, the labor union, the, the stevedores out on the West Coast? That Harry guy? Bridges. That's it, Harry Bridges, Australian. They always called him a communist and everything. But what happened, a friend of mine was it worked with him right next to him, wrote the book on automation, containerization. Mm -hmm. Should we not have containerization, we keep it all locked in? Containerization, no, open that. up new economic you're, models you're, where you could tap those things. They're going to go with it because they can make a profit. Heard what out Mike Maynard Kane said about the Rentier class, about landlords? Well, oh, go on. That uh, they well, should be euthanized. Well, because okay. Because they don't serve any well, wait, wait. social purpose. Okay, uh, give a dictionary definition of the Rentier class. Then. What, what is it? People who own they capital? Rent, they, own or land what? and they rent. Or not only they are landlords. Okay, He's land thinking about landlords. Well, we have landlords all over the place, and we have owners of capital we have instruments rent that are valuable. rising in New York City yes. faster than the rate of inflation. Yeah, and we have so many people on Section Eight, and so many people living in the street. Right. And this mayor has been a disaster on all fronts. On yeah. all of the five-fingered exercise. Yeah, but all again, the fingers of the five-fingered exercise. Back to so you and had especially on the environment, which yeah. he claimed he was the environmental mayor. Yeah. All they had to do was sandbag the Con Ed plant on 14th Street 
to prevent the entire area south of 34th Street from going down. Is that down. true? You yes. know that? I haven't because read that. Because it, it blew up. Yeah, really? Because yeah. It, salt water got in Is that there. what caused the lights to go out down south? Uh, yes. The, Manhattan the Con Ed plant on Terrible 14th Street. Terrible destruction, yeah. Right. There's, you're and, they didn't, and they didn't do it. He, you know, you bring in the army. That's well, what you use the army for, the well, National Guard. Right, right. That's what they do in other countries. And, they're, they're, get, and they're getting... But they brought them in yeah. after the damage had been done. Right. You bring them in before. Yeah, and they're you also... Have, they're also listen to the weather forecast. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, then back to that. So <laughs> I was looking at the containerization so they can go out, and there are all kinds of things that made possible getting globalization. That's another thing that's yes. going on. But the Thanks longer... To technology. The longer thing... But the technology is... is ex in a ratio with labor, mm -hmm. technology is going from 10% of the production was uh, something other than labor to 80%, 90% is technology that is creating that. the wealth. We seven. That's what's creating yes. the wealth. Wait, 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 so me. the only no, way labor is creating the wealth, otherwise Walmart would not be in Bangladesh. No, 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 and no. They would not be the most profitable dynasty in no, this country. Not, not, no, because I mean, it's take, taking country. advantage of that with marketing. marketing. They're very good marketing. They Excuse have to me, do all kinds of. Why do they go of, to Bangladesh to, to grow? Because it's less, it's less costly for them to operate, and so they can keep it low. And they're not interested in the United States. They're not interested. They're not. Right. They're not. They're not. Why should? They be. They're, Why? Not patriotic. they're not. Why should they be? They're because patriotic. Because they're Americans. Let them get the hell out of the country then. Well, okay, it's not likely to happen though. No, I but I'm just telling because you. Because there's this a is Ron Paul's position. Yeah. I don't like his positions on a lot of social yeah. issues. Uh, yeah. But on this Ron J class, on this economics and on foreign policy, this this one percent not only wants to control the economy of Bangladesh, they want to control the government of Bangladesh, yeah. which is why the United States has 96 percent of all the military bases in the world. I That's know. That's a tremendous drain on the economy, on the society, we're and on the dollar. We're, we're headed for a, for a crash, un, um, unbelievable crash. I, 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 I agree. I, I joked yeah. with people. Yeah. I said, what are you going with Obama? He's going to be elected in yeah. 2008 yeah, yeah. because they need somebody to handle the situation, yeah. who has a face of the people who are being hurt the most uh, here and in the world. Yeah. Okay? And second term, I said the same thing. No chance. You, you have a, a colleague that I argued with over this. Yeah. No chance he's going to lose because it's going to be worse. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if he declares martial law in the second term. It, it because the, eco the economy, economic situation is deteriorating. Yeah, yeah, so that's fast. right. And there, For the and average it, person, I'm yeah. talking about this. Yeah, right. Market. Well, it makes it, it, <clears throat> it, it, you can see why it is. Because there, there's nothing in place from anybody that really addresses the ultimate structural problem that's of getting demand buying power, money, into the hands of the people en masse, other than, and all you ever hear anybody say, get jobs. Well, Labor. Listen. That's in, the only thing. In, They're all hung up on Austria, the labor theory in, in of Austria, value. In Austria, they give people an allowance so that they can pump the economy. Austrian wow. citizens, they give them a certain amount of money to do well, this. Okay. Well, in, in so Austria, they, they Because do. they have some kind of social conscience. They believe everybody should be involved in the society. Well, that's the thing that they They don't could just give them fruit stamps, shunt them off to the side, and then when their kids are walking down the street, stop and frisk them, yeah. as Bloomberg did. Yeah. Okay? I have students who are terrorized. They can't do exams. They can't do their work. Soon they leave house, they think they're going to be stopped and frisked, thrown against a car by the police. You're talking about that now. You're yes, in New York. I'm talking where about are you, Where are you teaching now? Borough of Manhattan Community College. B downtown. Downtown. That's a good where school. Where I'm elected faculty advisor, one of the two, to uh -huh. student government. Okay. And the reason why I'm re-elected time and time again is because I stand up for the interests of the people, the uh -huh. students. Some of whom have to choose between a metro card and lunch to get uh -huh. to school. Uh -huh. Okay? That's wrong. That's not just. We have the most unequal industrial society on the planet, the uh, United States. Unequal. In the United States, now you The United think. States yeah. is. Yes. Okay. And, and the trend is going the wrong direction. And the trend is definitely going the wrong direction. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. Because of foreign policy factors. Okay. The Go United on. Okay. Uh, before the Second World War, mm -hmm. the rich, like Prescott Bush, yeah. were financing the He was hitting Hitler. Hitler. Prescott Hitler. Bush financed That's correct. Hitler. Yeah. Nothing happened to him because he was a Bush. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Bo and his son and Prescott was the head of fundraising at Yale yeah. where they have the Skull and Bones fraternity, yeah. one of the numerous secret fraternities. Right, right. Okay. Uh -huh. And 
when George Jr. went to there on the, I'm talking about George, George Herbert Walker Prescott Bush, yeah. number 41 of presidency, when he went there, he went on the GI Bill, okay? But what happened in the consequence of the Second World War, they had all been banking on the Germans to beat the s Slavs, the mm -hmm. Teutons to beat the Slavs. Yeah. And when that yeah. didn't happen, not only did it not happen, but the Red Army drove yeah, the Stalingrad and all exact, that. Exactly. Yeah. From Stalingrad to Berlin. Yeah, yeah. And by the time they realized what was happening, because they were playing around in North Africa, why? Because they wanted to secure the oil. The yeah. Anglo Americans wanted yeah. to secure the Ro oil of the Roosevelt has seen that without Okay, bill. so we had the Cold War, hmm. right? We had the Cold War, and we spent 50 <sighs> years since no country sacrificed so little and gained so much from the Second World War. As so us. much money was spent bringing down Soviet communism. Yeah. So what happened was, Containment George in, in, order to bring, yeah. in order to bring the Soviets down, because it was atheistic communism, uh -huh. they and, built socialism, up, and they yeah. built up Islamic fundamentalism. Yeah. So when the Soviet Union dismantled itself in 1991, it was only after Helmut Kohl and Mikhail Gorbachev worked out an agreement to reunite Germany. Right, okay? right, right. Uh, yeah. and the Soviet Union dismantled itself, became the Russian Federation, and Yeltsin came in, who was no Democrat, and the yeah. United States supported him even when he bombed the Soviet Parliament, even yeah. when he bombed the Parliament. That had never happened before in, in Russian history. I'm still trying to find the dog in this fight and the enemy, and what I can't see it as a what trend. Do I don't, I don't understand what's the, the trend. The point is, and who the bad guys are? The Anglo-Americans are trying to rule the world. Washington and London is trying to rule the world. That's why they have. Why wouldn't they? Why, Why wouldn't they? Of course, the rest they of the world have. doesn't want to be ruled. Well, that may be. They didn't want to rule okay. their own rule. And of course, the United States is not in a position to take on the Russians, the Chinese, and Islamic fundamentalism simultaneously. Well, who's going to fight them? I mean, they're fighting. I mean, where have We're you got We're fighting everywhere. Well, okay. Yeah, all of that's it, but it's still back to the structural thing. Yes. And it applies the to everywhere. The structure of empire. And I'm saying the problem. where do we live? What's the city? What, what is the tallest building? Uh, what is the state called? Let's deal with that. The what Empire State. The Empire State. It's right. all about empire. What's they so wanted to create an empire. Well, they want to have influence. They want they, to project no, no, power. No, no, no. Empire. Doing. Empire. Yeah, empire. What did Washington call his army? Mm, I'm not sure. The Continental Army. Yeah. They wanted Canada. Yeah. I, I, why did the British burn the White House? 1812. I don't why know why they, they did. It? Probably because they were angry no, because, because we won the No, because the United States invaded York and burned uh, That's it. true. And what was that's York? True. York was Tor is Toronto. James Joyce had Daedalus say history is a nightmare. There's never been justice. No, no, it's only a matter of no, it's I only a stick matter to an evolutionary. Well, you want an evolutionary picture? Well, of all you're history. saying really is no. real politics. But I'm not jumping around. No, but you're just saying it's right. real politics. It's, it's That's the basis by which the world it's operates. Reached, it's reached its cool de sac. It's well, dead okay. End here. Why? What now? What makes it different? I'm trying to get at this idea. Uh, I think the problem is with the is with the left, is they've, they've got this, uh, swan, this song of the labor theory of value, surplus labor theory of value. Labor is so wonderful, and they Excuse allow me, the Howard. only way. That's why Walmart goes to Bangladesh, to get cheap labor, right. to get more surplus value. So, proving the surplus value Why theory. wouldn't they? It's efficient. But they the would point do is it. that it's proves efficient. the surplus no, value. No, but it's the left that's the problem. It's not the left. Adam Smith it's talks about surplus value. No. So does David Ricardo. Okay, well, I'm saying. What they accept, why does the people, general what citizens, are you blaming the, the left only for? because. Why don't you blame the people because in power? Because what you need. Why don't you blame the people in power for making these rotten decisions that only serve their personal interests well, they, instead of serving the greater community? Because that's what everybody a does. sense to of know, civic responsibility, what, okay. like Ralph Nader why? symbolizes. Why? Ralph Nader is integrity. He hasn't well, become. That's right. He's not having You know why? Because he was. He was Stereotype. It's not practical. What it's not it's practical. Not pra this is practical. Sandy is practical. No. The collapse of the economy. I'm trying to get back 40, to 40, 50 the, million people on food stamps. Trying to get. It's wrong. It's not right. We need something new. What you have to do. We need to have the one percent. What exemplify shared sacrifice in 1976? Why should they? Excuse they're me, Because they're heading for a very bad. Well, okay, you're going to bring civil war in the streets. That's what they're. This is well, why this book is called "Race and Class Politics in New York City Before the Civil War." Yeah. Now I can write a sequel before the next civil war yeah. because that's what they're pushing. No. This is a society armed 
yeah. through the Second Amendment. Now, what do we say? And in Bloomberg says about his police force, I have my own private army. He said that on Jay Leno. 33,000. His he, own that's army. That's what he yeah. And he I uses know. them as he such. Says, yeah, I, okay. yeah, but all of this is so obvious. It's such an obvious well, one-sided un, you, thing. And you you're not one looking, you're you're not looking at the larger. He's, he no. is They're the bad of, guys. You're the good one. That's it. We're good. Because they're I bad. Don't, I don't engage in that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. There's okay. a difference. Yeah, but what There's I'm no moral compass there. It's because of this attitude that we're in trouble. The what attitude is your to, voice. What am I thing? supposed to do? Well, for one thing, is look at the facts, sir. What are the facts? You're not looking, looking at, the, at fact. the facts. Tell me the facts. How about the facts? Why do the people have the idea that people who are able to be in power and everything have be able to sell the idea that the only way for the citizen to get money is to have a job, labor? So, how do you suggest? When the production is all being so done, what do you, suggest you have you? to form capital in a way where the ownership of the capital is dispersed to everybody as a way and of what distributing are they demand. Producing? And what are they producing? They will never come up. And what are they producing? What are they're producing is they're what producing they produce? whatever comes out of an automated system, which is 50,000 uh, uh, jobs be able, displaced. How are going to be by, the labor the theory of value is the problem. If being, thinking well, no, that labor not jump. Let's is just, not, let's that's, the specifics. that's the question to be addressed no. to you, and you don't Excuse do it. And the me, left I doesn't am, address the, it. That labor theory of value is demonstrated by the fact that Walmart goes to Bangladesh and not to New York Well, if City. you want to say that, that's part what of the co container. The uh, but it doesn't answer the structure. What they should do is hoist capitalism on its own petard, and you don't do it by just saying they're bastards. You do it by having a system that is going to hoist them on their own petard. We don't have a, a, well, a be critique. specific. I want a specific. Well, we haven't got time you. because, you know, one of the, big, <laughs> the great problems in the universe, uh, in evolutionary terms, is this thing called time. We've run out right. of time. Okay, so Tony, Bill so O'Reilly, this is yeah. John. Stewart. <laughs> not hardly, not hardly, not hardly. No, I we're we're agreement on this. How things uh, have to be changed fundamentally.